What is going on everyone? It's Andy with Andy Solder King Outdoor Adventures here. Thank you for coming back for yet another video. In today's video we're going to be talking about all about grubs in the lawn, how to prevent them, when, why, and everything in between. In addition, we're going to be applying more RGS and Humic 12 to this lawn. So with that, let's get a quick lawn update and then we're going to talk all about grubs, that invader that no one likes. With that, let's roll with the video. Alright, hopefully that camera angle is good. I took the selfie stick and I propped it up over the fence. But that's the front yard, five weeks since I've applied any fertilizer. Looks really, really good. Here's the back lawn, May 9th, 2020. It's pretty good. We do have a few broadleaf weeds in here that might be giving it a little hazy kind of look. But for the most part, the green color is still holding strong. It's been five weeks since I've applied any nitrogen, so I'm pretty happy with this. So what are grubs? Grubs are those little white shrimp that you might see in your lawn at any point in the year. They are the larvae of Japanese beetles. They feed on your lawn's root system which can cause brown spots especially in the later summer and especially during the fall time so it's important to get down your prevention but to understand when to put down your preventative we need to understand the life cycle of a grub so on this bag of grub control it explains the cycle so every lawn has grubs no matter how healthy or weak so they come out of winter hibernation by late spring they will enter the pupa stage and then they will emerge as japanese beetles and or also known as june bugs so in around june time and in, in the summertime, the beetles uh, lay their eggs. The, those eggs are the new grub population. And then during the summertime, usually when your lawn is dormant, they will feed on the root system. And then in the fall time, you will notice damage. And at that point, it's too late to prevent the damage, and you need to fix it, which can uh, get uh, to be a pretty big hassle. So get the preventative down. So when timing your grub application, you want to get it down before the June bugs or the Japanese beetles emerge. So I'm in northern Illinois, so that's going to be right around early June. Farther south in the warm season grass, it might be later April to early May. And you want to get a grub control that's going to last throughout the feeding season, which is typically going to be, in my area, it's going to be through about September. So it's May 9th today. I need to make sure my preventative lasts through about the end of September. So with that, I'm going to talk about the two products that I recommend are active ingredients and why. So the first option you have to prevent grubs is a product called imidacloprid, or that's the active ingredient. It's uh, it's pretty old school, you know, not as many people are using it because people are, there's studies showing that it could be linked to death in honeybees, which I'm not going to here to talk about that. But imidacloprid is good because it's a fast ramp up and it'll give you about a three month residual. So in my area, you'd want to apply that around late May. If you're farther south, you're going to want to move the time back. If you're up north, move it ahead a little bit. So imidacloprid, it's a good product. I'll link below to a granular option and a liquid option of imidacloprid. It's but for me, I am not going to be using imidacloprid. I'm going to be using Scott's Grub X, which the active ingredient on this is chlorantraniprol. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, this product is a little bit different. It's a newer chemistry. It's fairly new compared to imidacloprid, and this takes a much longer ramp up time. So it takes a few weeks, even a month sometimes to kick in. So if June bugs are emerging in June, you're going to want to apply this late April to early May, which today's May 9th. I'm all good there. And it goes without saying, with any grub application, it needs to be watered in. This particular one says you need one full inch of water to get it watered into the soil. So I guess I'm going to have to hope for a good rain to come very soon. So, if you're starting out early, and, oh, I forgot to mention, this one does have a four-month residual as well. Uh, if you're starting out early or on time, use this one. If you're starting out later, use the imidacloprid. They're both good options. If I had to recommend one, I would go with this guy right here. So, let's get to applying it. Before we can begin spreading, which I've already poured the product in, we need to wear our PPE, or personal protective equipment. So, some rubber boots, long pants, rubber gloves, and eye protection. Make sure you do that. Just don't be out here in shorts and flip-flops, okay? Now how to apply this product, it's like applying fertilizer. You're going to set the dial accordingly, which mine said to set it to three and a half. You're going to kick on your edge guard. You're going to do your perimeter pass around the whole yard. Turn the edge guard off and just fill in the middle like you'd be fertilizing. So without further ado, let's roll. Alright guys, check this out. I have 4,700 square feet of turf. Look at that. 
I'd say I got my application just about perfect. Alright, so once you got your grub control done, blow off your sidewalks or whatever, sweep them off. I already did that, so let's get to spraying and praying. So for today's spraying and praying application, we're going to use my Sprayers Plus FH25V. And we're going to apply yet another dose of RGS and the Humic 12. I'm sorry if the lighting is not too good. But today we're going to go 3 ounces per thousand on both of these because I already went pretty heavy last weekend. So today we're just going to go a light dose here, stimulate a little bit of root growth, increase nutrient availability, feed the microbes in the soil, and all the other goodies. So with that, let's mix and spray and pray. Got the RGS in here. We're doing... A full tank here, so we're doing six ounces. Sorry if the lighting's not good, but we got six ounces of humic. We're all good. Alright everyone, I just finished up editing the video and I apologize the clip of me spraying the liquid RGS and Humic 12 did not turn out. I apologize for that, but there will be more spraying to come of that. So without further ado, let's roll to the outro. Alright, I want to thank everyone for watching all the way to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something from today's video. With that, I'm Andy Zonker and Outdoor Adventures. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe and stay tuned because there's plenty more lawn care content to come this year. And I will see you guys on next week's video.